All right, so uh, I've got a lot of questions, and today I'm going to do my best to answer them. What's up? Hey. How's it going? All right, so um, basically what, we're ha what we had today was uh, a mild form of panic, where, you know, since the beginning of the year, you know, you have this rising market pretty much across, uh, across the world, and, you know, today's like the first day that went down, everyone's like, oh my God, welcome. I wouldn't worry about it, because if you, if you take the whole perspective into account and you know your price earnings ratio, we're, we're not that bad. So I've been asked, how do you calculate uh, the PEG, the price earnings growth rate? Uh, basically, it's your price earnings ratio forward looking, so for, I, I call that the forward PE, over your growth rate. And the way I calculate the growth, the, the growth rate, is that right? Does anyone know PEG? I think that's right. The, the goal is to have it less than one, because then when you buy, you can confidently say that you're going to make money. Um, price to earnings growth. P price to earnings ratio. Like growth. I didn't look. What? Do you guys know price to earnings growth? I'm a pharmacist. He's an engineer. <laughs> <laughs> PE divided by your growth. I know it. Yeah, it's just your PE divided by growth. So your growth is 10%, and your price to earnings ratio is 10. You're, you have a PEG ratio of one. So the goal is to have like a price earnings ratio of one and a growth rate of like 30%. Because then you have one over 30, which is less than one. And those are the kind of companies that I'm looking for. And eventually you hope that the price earnings ratio will inflate to 30 and you just made a lot of money. Like, a lot of money. But, um, all right. Are you factoring in elements like inflation hedges to your value calculation, or is that just a perk? Um, kind of, sort of, not really. Uh, most of the companies I've invested in in China, I mean, if you buy a materials company in China, you're taking advantage of the US dollar to their currency exchange rate. You're taking into account the inflation of the commodities that you know, they're mining or working on, and you know, the price inflation there. So I guess it's just a perk. Um, do you use any fancy in investment strategies? I don't do covered calls or any of the fancy stuff. I just buy the stock. And most, that's, most of the companies that I deal in don't even have call options. And the ones that do, like the banks, I buy calls instead of buying the stock. And that's what I was doing in March. How much research do you do about the industries of the companies? Uh, most of what I do is real company specific, but a lot of what I do is look through annual and quarterly reports of construction companies to figure out what are they building, what projects are getting canceled, uh, where is everyone trying to, you know, head looking forward, and you know you can figure out a lot about what's going on in local areas and across the world if you just look through, you know, large backlogs of what these construction companies, especially uh, cement uh, construction company or cement manufacturers and. All that stuff. All right, so how did I start? I've been asked that too. Uh, grade school, I bought stocks. Uh, I got two really great stock picks from my grandfather and mom. Both went bankrupt. So I started asking questions. In middle school, I picked AOL and Netflix. Made some money. Woohoo! <laughs> so, you know, I started there. High school, I started putting in more time. Started breaking out serious analysis. Uh, Omar and I uh, did a little bit of Zach's analysis and got sidetracked for about, I don't know, two months of. 10 hour days and didn't get anything done. And then I learned all, all about rating systems. If you got CAPS rating, ZAX rating, a Morningstar rating, like Stock Scouter rating. You have all these rating systems out there that people want to impress on you. And in my opinion, they all sucked. Uh, CAPS rating actually works though. If you use it, you will beat the market. Um, and then Doug, I ran into Doug Hall and he helped me out. He's my mentor. He's beating the market. And that's kind of, you know, one of the criteria I look for in someone that's going to teach me their strategy. So in college, I wasted two years trying to automate, uh, you know, Doug's theory. And, uh, you know, I didn't really get anywhere. So I sat down one summer and put in 40-hour weeks outside of work. You know, sat weekends in my garage eating uh, rotisserie chicken and Coca-Cola. And, you know, plugged in numbers, plugged in shrug. So who cares about failures? So here's how I started. I basically broke out the uh, Fortune Small Business Top 100 Growth Companies and other various lists that you could find publicly and went through all the companies one at a time 
and analyzed them, and then I bought the best ones I could find, and then I rinsed and repeated. So uh, this is a tool that I have that I've done for this, and we had a couple of requests last class. This is Abbott Laboratories. Um, you know, I would look at this and say that you know it looks like they've been growing at a ballpark 10% a year over the last uh, five years on a quarterly basis, and um, they're their calculated implied growth based on their current price earnings ratio is 6.3%. So if you buy it now, you are more likely to make money than lose money. But at the same point, that's not for me to warrant buying Abbott Laboratories. Um, so basically, you know, you'll go through all these companies. And that's what I was talking about uh, as far as charting revenues and growth. There's uh, three types of, there's three ways to chart something linearly. There's a uh, logarithmic, there's linear, and there's semi-log. Uh, obviously, you want to go with the semi-log. And the way that you do this is a logarithmic. You just do the axis, axes. And then semi-log is just log on the bottom. And this is linear on both sides. And uh, this would be a typical chart of a maturing company. This would be mid-stage of maturing and early, and then this is your high growth company. And they, these are really the ones I shoot for, obviously, because <laughs> the future growth hopefully maintains a growth rate you know, that I forecasted it to. So then what you'll do is you know, you'll sort through a bunch of these companies, and a lot of them, like the reason I've kind of strayed away from using high analytics is because you can't download data on all the companies that I invest in. So you'll sort through companies and you'll look at companies like this. What is this, ConocoPhillips? Uh, I would say this is not predictable and move on just like that. Um, Marathon Oil, I don't know if that will pull. Is it this, is it, that's almost the same, isn't it? Yeah. Almost the same. Yeah, I'd say that, I mean, you can tell in the last uh, three quarters or four quarters that it took a dive and now might be resurfacing. But I mean, you can look at the revenue growth and the earnings growth and the implied growth matches the revenue growth, so I would say not interested. And the goal is to spend, at most, 30 seconds sorting through companies that you're not interested in. And this is why I've built, and I can look back uh, the last 10 years as far as uh, the price earnings ratio of stock versus the price earnings ratio of the market. I look back 10 years, uh, revenue growth, earnings growth, uh, calculate trend lines, you know, all sorts of fancy stuff, but the bottom line is the fancy stuff doesn't really get you anywhere. What really gets you places is uh, I mostly use Google Finance, so um, what have I been buying today? I'll show you, these are the three companies that I bought today, and I'll show you why I bought them, or why I am buying them. It's really pretty straightforward. Yeah, what's up? Uh, for this? Yeah, I use all these numbers to calculate the growth rate of the company. So you can basically take the 10th uh, year, divided by the first year, and so you have year 10, and then you'll do this for both revenues and net income minus year one. I think it's something like that to calculate the growth rate. And then you divide by year one or year 10, or the average of the two. I mean, but I can look at it even. My, my formulas are really complicated, though, because I use all sorts of spreadsheet analysis. All right, V86 and V87. Revenue growth. All right. That's really, really complicated. So, yeah, basically what I thought I did is you take, you know, these four and you divide them by these and you calculate the average growth rate over the time frame. And these are all quarterly, so it'll be over five years instead of 10. But this is something more like what Buffett would do. He'll take you know, long-term averages of boring companies. Boring meaning that it's really predictable. Most people get excited about large fluctuations. So he'll take a boring company, calculate the intrinsic growth rate that they've had over the last 10 years and forecast it in the future after understanding the industry, the company, where they're positioned, if they have you know, an edge anywhere that you know, boxes out their competition or you know, lobbyists and government. And, uh, you know, he basically focuses on not losing money in the long run. So, I mean, that's where I get those numbers. 